What are the crimes that can arise from the acquisition, possession, or use of a gun? The answer to this question can be found in Republic Act 10591, otherwise known as the Comprehensive Firearms and Ammunition Regulation Act, which took effect sometime in September of 2013, and some related laws. Let's start the ball rolling. But first, what is a gun? A gun is a weapon used to expel a metal projectile called a bullet. This bullet is then discharged or fired by means of burning gunpowder used as a propellant. Now, a gun works like this. A bullet is loaded into the rear of the barrel, which is a tube connected to the firing pin. The trigger is the catalyst that sets a chain of events starting with the release of the firing pin which flies forward, striking a tiny explosive charge located in the base of the bullet. That explosion ignites the gunpowder which is stuck inside the shell casing surrounding the bullet. The pressure change forces the bullet out of the casing and down the barrel toward the target. Now, take note that air guns and other devices that fire projectiles without the use of combustion or expansive force of gases from gunpowder are not considered firearms. So, you can see now that the common denominator of what makes a weapon a gun is that a metal projectile is discharged by means of burning gunpowder. There are two categories of firearms under Republic Act 10591. The first category is called the small arms. Small arms as defined in the said law are firearms intended to be or primarily designed for individual use or that which is generally considered to mean a weapon intended to be fired from the hand or shoulder, which are not capable of fully automatic bursts of discharge. Ito yung mga firearms na yung putok pa isa-isa lang. Hindi siya capable of producing a rapid fire, like a machine gun. Now, small arms include the handgun, which can be a pistol or a revolver. It also includes the rifle and the shotgun. The second category is called the light weapons. And light weapons can be class A light weapons. They refer to self-loading pistols, rifles, carbines, submachine guns, assault rifles, and light machine guns not exceeding 7.62 mm. It also includes Class B light weapons. Ito yung mga mabibigat na. They refer to weapons designed for use by two or more persons serving as a crew, or rifles and machine guns exceeding caliber 7.62 mm. Examples of Class B light weapons are heavy machine guns, grenade launchers, anti-aircraft anti guns, anti-tank guns, portable launchers of anti-tank missile and rocket systems, and the like. What are the firearms that may be registered? Under Section 10 of Republic Act 10591, Bear in mind that only small arms may be registered by licensed citizens or licensed juridical entities for ownership, possession, and concealed carry. This means that from the time of the effectivity of RA 10591, light weapons can no longer be registered by private individuals or private juridical entities. These light weapons 
can only be lawfully acquired or possessed exclusively by the Armed Forces of the Philippines, the Philippine National Police, and other law enforcement agencies. But there is an exception. Private individuals who have already licenses to possess Class A light weapons upon the effectivity of Republic Act 10591, meaning to say before RA10591 became effective as a law, they were already licensees of Class A light weapons. They will not be deprived of the privilege to continue possessing the same and renewing the licenses therefore. Going back to the question I posed at the start of this video, what then are the crimes that can arise from the acquisition, possession, or use of a firearm? As to acquisition or possession, a person can be charged of the crime of illegal or unlawful acquisition or possession of a firearm or illegal or unlawful acquisition or possession of ammunition under Section 28 of Republic Act 10591 if the person concerned has no license to own and possess such firearm. So, ang importante dito, before ka bumili, or before you come into possession of a firearm, you must first apply and obtain a license to own and possess a firearm, or what is popularly known as the LTAP. Now, the LTAP shall include the license to possess ammunition with a maximum of 50 rounds for each registered firearm. Now, a firearm, take note, includes major parts of a firearm. What are these major parts of a firearm? They include the barrel, slide, frame, receiver, cylinder, or bolt assembly. This also includes any part or kit designed and intended for use in converting a semi-automatic burst to a full automatic firearm. Hence, the mere unlawful or illegal acquisition or possession of the said major parts is enough to constitute a violation under Section 28. Section 28 also punishes the mere acquisition or possession of ammunition for the said firearm. But this offense will be absorbed if committed by the same person charged with the illegal possession of a firearm. So for example, X was caught in possession of an unlicensed firearm. And this firearm was loaded with a magazine filled with bullets. Here, there is only one crime to be charged. And that is the crime of illegal possession of a firearm. X need not be charged or separately charged for illegal possession of ammunition because, like what I said, the crime of illegal possession of ammunition will be absorbed if committed by the same person who is facing a charge of illegal possession of a firearm. Now, another offense that can arise from a person's possession of a firearm is the crime of lack of permit to carry firearm outside of residence as defined and penalized under Section 31 of Republic Act 10591. Meaning to say, if you carry the firearm outside of your residence without any legal authority therefore, meaning you did not obtain a permit to carry a firearm or to carry your firearm outside of your residence, then you will be liable under Section 31. 
and this is so regardless of whether your firearm is licensed or registered. Why? Because the mere possession of a license will not absolve you from criminal liability if you also did not obtain a permit to carry your firearm outside of your residence. Hence, you must still secure a permit to carry your firearm outside of your residence. As to use of a firearm in the commission of a crime, you must distinguish between the use of a loose firearm in the commission of a crime and the use of a licensed or registered firearm in the commission of a crime. But before that, we must define what a loose firearm is. Loose firearm, as defined in Section 29 of RA 10591, refers to an unregistered firearm, an obliterated or altered firearm, a firearm which has been lost or stolen, an illegally manufactured firearm, or registered firearms in the possession of an individual other than the licensee, and unlicensed firearms and those with revoked licenses. Now, when a loose firearm is used in the commission of a crime, what would be the effect? The effect will be that the use of such loose firearm becomes an aggravating circumstance when the use of the said firearm is inherent in the commission of a crime punishable under the revised penal code or a special penal law. There will be no separate charge for illegal possession of a firearm. Now, the term inherent means the use of the firearm is necessary in the commission of a crime. For example, X discharges a loose firearm in a public place. Here, X will be liable for the crime of alarms and scandals aggravated by the use of a loose firearm. That should be the proper designation of the offense state the actual crime committed, alarms and scandals, in this example, and then since the use of a loose firearm is only considered an aggravating circumstance, meaning to say there will be no separate charge for illegal possession of a firearm, then the proper designation for the crime committed should be alarms and scandals aggravated by the use of a loose firearm as defined and penalized in Article 154 in relation to Section 29 of Republic Act 10591. Another example, X angry at Y for humiliating him in front of their classmates, shot an injured Y with the use of a loose firearm. What will be the criminal liability of X? X will be liable for attempted or frustrated homicide or murder aggravated by the use of a loose firearm. Why is that so? This is so because the use of the loose firearm by X was necessary for, for him to be able to commit the crime of attempted or frustrated homicide or murder. Now, if the use of the loose firearm is in furtherance of or incident to or in connection with the crime of rebellion or insurrection or attempted coup d'etat, such violation shall be absorbed as an element of the crime of rebellion or insurrection or attempted coup d'etat. There will be no separate charge for illegal possession of a firearm.
For example, X, an NPA combatant, together with his comrades, raided the police station and killed the chief of police with the use of a loose firearm. It will be the criminal liabi liability of X here. X here will be charged with the crime of rebellion. Only one crime of rebellion because his use of the said firearm will just be absorbed as an element of the rebellion. Another rule. If the crime is committed by the person without using the loose firearm, the possession this time shall be considered a distinct and separate offense. For example, X was arrested in a by bust operation for selling shabu. As a result of the search on his person incidental to his lawful warrantless arrest, he was found in actual possession of a loose firearm. Here, X will be separately charged for two crimes, one for selling shabu or sale of dangerous drugs and another for illegal possession of a firearm. This is so because ang sabi ng rule, pag nag-commit ng crime ang isang tao na hindi niya kailangan gumamit ng baril and at the time he committed the crime, he was also caught in possession of a loose firearm. Ang mangyayari doon is he will be charged for two crimes based on the example I gave. One for selling shabu or one for the crime the person actually committed and another for his illegal possession of such firearm. Now, what about if instead of a loose firearm, a licensed firearm this time is used in the commission of a crime? What is the rule? The rule is when a licensed firearm is used in the commission of a crime under either the revised penal code or under a special penal law, such use of a licensed firearm will neither be considered an aggravating circumstance nor a separate offense. Example, X with the use of his licensed firearm shot and seriously injured Y. Here, X will be liable for frustrated homicide or murder as the case may be. His use of his licensed firearm based on the rule, will neither be considered an aggravating circumstance, meaning to say, it will not serve to increase the penalty imposable, nor will it be considered a separate offense. He will not be separately charged for illegal possession because in the first place, his gun is licensed. So how can that be illegal possession? He will only be charged for one crime. And in this example, X is liable for frustrated homicide or murder as the case may be, or if the victim dies, then he will be charged for homicide or murder. Another example, X shot and seriously injured Y with the use of a firearm licensed in the name of another. Here, X will be charged with frustrated homicide or murder, this time aggravated by the use of a loose firearm. Bakit fiscal na licensed naman yung baril niya? As what I've told you in the previous slide, even if the gun is registered or, li or licensed, if that gun is used by a person other than the licensee, that gun will be considered as a loose firearm. Okay? A gun used by a person other than the licensee will be considered as a loose firearm. So in this example, the gun used by X, although licensed, but it was licensed in the name of another, it will be considered as a loose firearm. For which reason, X will be charged with 
the crime of frustrated homicide or murder aggravated by the use of a loose firearm. Here is a summary of the variant crimes under the revised penal code that can arise from the use of a firearm. First, we have the crime of alarms and scandals under Article 155, Paragraph 1 of the revised penal code. For example, X discharges a firearm within any town or in a public place, but the firearm is not aimed at a particular person. Take note of the underscored portion. This is the important thing to consider in the crime of alarms and scandals, particularly paragraph 1. To repeat, the offender, for purposes of this crime, must not have aimed his gun at a particular person at the time of the discharge of such firearm. Because if the offender, at the time of such discharge, aimed his gun at at a particular person, he will no longer be liable for alarms and scandals, but he will be liable instead for the crime of either illegal discharge of firearm under Article 254 or attempted or frustrated homicide or murder as the case may be. In the case of illegal discharge of firearm, the offender aims and discharges his firearm at a particular person, provided, however, that there should be no intent to kill on the part of the offender. Now, you might ask, Fiscal, pag tinutok ng offender yung baril niya dun sa tao, tapos pinaputok niya, hindi ba yan enough to show that the offender intended to kill the victim? My answer to that question is not necessarily because there could be other circumstances that will show that the offender did not intend to kill his victim. Like for example, the offender was too far in distance from the victim and the offender could have thought that even if he pulled the trigger or even if he fired the gun, the bullet that would be expelled from the gun would not hit the said victim. Or it could be that the offender merely intended to scare or frighten, harass or intimidate or threaten his victim. And it just so happens that he accidentally pulled the trigger of the firearm resulting in the victim getting hit in the process. Now, if the victim is hit and the injury sustained is serious or less serious, then the offender will be liable for two crimes. Actually, it is a compound crime. One for illegal discharge of firearm and one for serious or less serious physical injuries. Why compound crime? It is a compound crime because the single act of pulling the trigger of a firearm or the single act of firing a gun results in the commission of two crimes. And in this example, it resulted in the commission of illegal discharge of firearm and the crime of serious or less serious physical injuries. Now, what if only slight physical injury results? Probably the police lang. Would that result also into a compound crime? The answer to that is no. Because if the injury is only slight, it will be absorbed in the crime of illegal discharge of firearm. Meaning to say there will only be one crime to be charged against the offender. Now, going to the crime of attempted or frustrated homicide or murder, the offender this time intends to kill his victim. So, 
by aiming and discharging his firearm at a particular person and coupled with the fact that the offender fires several shots towards the victim shows that the offender had the intention to kill his victim even if in the process the victim did not get hit or even if in the process the injury sustained by the victim is only slight so here the victim may be injured or he may not be injured and if the victim is not injured the crime is at least attempted homicide or attempted murder as the case may be now another crime that can arise from the use of a firearm is the crime of other light threats under article 285 paragraph 1 of the revised penal code for example x threatens another with a firearm or draw such firearm in a quarrel the crime would be other light threats but take note that here the offender must not discharge his firearm because in doing so or if he does so then he will be liable either for illegal discharge of a firearm or attempted or frustrated homicide or murder as the case may be another crime that can also arise from the use of a firearm is the crime of grave coercion under article 286 for example x the offender threatens another with a firearm provided however that the threat is direct immediate and serious and the person so threatened is compelled or prevented to do something against his will 